So I haven't really showed off a, a C++ library before, but uh, we're going to go through this anyway. Um, I did try to load it in Xcode. It looked like it was too small. So I tried to get text at it to uh, make it look bigger here. So, all right, bear with me. Um, so uh, this library, um, it's uh, pretty complicated, but uh, we've got uh, frequency lookup tables for some of the more um, common major frequencies. You can actually put in the FRS channel or the GMRS channel um, or even the weather channel. Um, so that'll let you, uh, you know, easily tune in frequencies. I mean, I don't know any of the FRS channels by heart, but I do know channel 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So uh, this makes it a lot easier to tune in those automatically. Um, we also have a Morse code table, as you can see here. And then this is probably going to get pulled out, but this is my attempt at doing uh, AFSK. Uh, Steven's got a way better idea with his uh, DDS algorithm, so um, we'll probably end up, we'll just take this out. Um, Let's see here. Uh, a lot of this is just uh, kind of the bare bones of how you set up a library, um, you know, being able to handle multiple instances, uh, specify a new ITC address, and so forth. Um, now, our initialization piece is the most critical. Um, there's a lot of things that need to be set on our chip before it's ready to go. And uh, um, a lot of that stuff was inside the uh, collateral they provided us. Um, unfortunately, that's under NDA, but we can create documents based on that and write this code. So we just annotated as much as we could, um, but you know, given the situation. Um, but this is how we get the, the whole chip uh, online and ready to go. Um, a lot of this is really convoluted and complicated, so I'll just scroll through this quickly here. Um, of course, this is all open source, so uh, you can take a look at it yourself if you want to look at the startup sequence. We also do a, a bit of defaults here. We, uh, you know, we set the frequency. Uh, we make sure that the the mic source is set up and the squelch is appropriate, and it's always receiving. Kind of gives you kind of a a, a, a basic setup uh, to get you going without having all these crazy functions all over. Uh, here's that test connection to make sure the shield's working. And uh, let's take a look here. We've got uh, we've got something that handles um, uh, resetting the chip, uh, set frequency. Um, we can get the frequency, um, and then this is all behind the scenes stuff. But uh, set frequency uh, handles the uh, uh, setting up the you know the, the well, I guess the frequency. Um, and uh, we've got UHF and VHF uh, band switching and you can actually turn off the filters. Please don't do that unless you've got something going on uh, for filtering. But you could turn off all the RF filters. Um, so we have different bands here. Um, let's see here. Uh, crystal frequencies. A lot of the stuff is internal here. I'm going to kind of scroll past this because it's... Uh, it's pretty boring so far. Um, let's see. Okay, here's our set mode transmit. Make sure that we're within the handbands. Um, you know, we do have some restriction detection, and and that just pre that prevents a, a mistake or an accident to keep you from transmitting out of band. Now, um, there's some uh, jurisdictions, of course, that have other frequencies, uh, different handbands and whatnot. And we do have a function that helps accommodate for that. I mean, this, this is strictly just U.S. Uh, band limitations, but I'll show you how that's done. Um, but please be careful um, when I do show you how to do that. Um, so uh, we do have a set mode receive, and you can actually turn everything off. And we do set the power down bit, which is a, a lower power mode. Now, um, the uh, chip allows us to set multiple sources. And uh, here we've got uh, microphone source, which is microphone includes the Arduino PWM as well as uh, uh, the microphone jack itself. Um, they're also, excuse me, there's also um, uh, tone oscillators you can switch it to um, or you can just turn it off. Uh, that might sound, sound silly, but if you're trying to experiment with CW and whatnot, you actually can set the audio source to none to reduce the noise. And the carrier doesn't quite get as tight as I'd like it to be, but it does get teeny enough, I think, actually, where Morse code is pretty viable. Um, and, and that'll be kind of a, a little trick slash hack that we'll get going here, uh, maybe in the future. Um, 
let's see, we also have the ability to um, uh, change the PA bias voltage, which controls the internal power amplifier. So um, the neat thing is, is that you can actually set the power level between negative 12 dBm and about 7 dBm. So the power is variable on the ham shield. Um, now that gets multiplied by our uh, amplifier stage, but you can actually uh, have somewhat fine resolution control of the power output. Now, of course, we've got support for all the different uh, 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 analog and digital sub-audio tones. So you can do all your PL tones. You can do the digital ones. Um, you can set uh, anything you want, really. Um, you know, both receive and transmit tones are independent, which is really cool. And I'm going to scroll through here. I don't know what positive and, and negative detection are, uh, but there's... It's so versatile, I don't know. <laughs> You're going to have to play with some of these if you really want to touch them. Um, now, here's something that's interesting. The CTCSS frequency is actually arbitrary. So, you could technically have um, all kinds of... You could make up like a halfway PL tone. Um, that might actually be kind of useful, I think, in some cases if... Uh, if you wanted to use an unusual PL tone for something. So you could just make sure that, you know, the remote, the, the far end you're talking to is really what you think it is. So if there's like an inner tie link or something like that for two repeaters, you know, you may not want somebody accidentally transmitting the tone or whatnot. Um, okay, we have support for the digital tones. One thing I don't know yet is if you can actually read the tone being transmitted by the far end, it'd be kind of cool. Um, that we might be able to identify the, the foreign station with the call sign that way, but it may not work that way, so I won't get your hopes up too much. Um, we also have, and now you may be able to use the tone detection. Um, I'll show you later for that too, but again, it, it's a possibility here. Um, now we got uh, our squelches here. Um, you can set the squelch between 0 and 100, I believe it is. And uh, there's actually a calculation for it. And uh, there's also Vox support. Now, Vox, uh, it, it can be very useful in some cases, like uh, um, if you had an audio source that maybe wasn't connected to the ham shield over serial, or, or uh, you know, maybe you had a packet radio application, you just wanted to transmit uh, from the computer audio or something else, and maybe it'd work automatically. So you can use Vox. Um, and that works good for the headset as well. We've got the tail noise elimination. Um, you know, we can detect, uh, um, you know, uh, phase shift. Now, um, we can actually configure um, DTMF tones. We can transmit tones, and we can also receive and detect them. So there is a, a framework here to detect tones, and I think it gets wrapped up in a function. If it doesn't, we'll make it easier to use, but... Um, we've also have deviation control. Um, we've got uh, volume controls. Um, and GPIOs you don't want to really play with, please, because you'll you'll start switching filters on and off, and you might send the power amplifier into the receive. I, you know, there's all kinds of nasty things. Just be careful with that one. Um, let's see. We've got this ST mode, which uh, huh. Can't remember what the ST does, but uh, oh yeah, it's a single tone generator. I'm sorry, so you can send, generate single tones. Um, we also have this uh, pre-emphasis de-emphasis filter um, disable function, so it'll actually disable all the filtering capability on the um, ham shield itself, which should make digital modes very easy to use. Um, we believe this is our key to be uh, able to do crazy things like 9600 baud packet, um, you know, receiving AIS uh, signals from boats over GMSK. This opens up a lot of really cool digital modes. And, uh, uh, and, and some of the, I believe some of the satellite stuff also has some crazy digital modes. Someone's going to have to write all that because I, I don't know how to do all that. But uh, um, you do have basically full discriminator access as far as we know to the chip. Um, we also can read the uh, uh, signal strength, and we can receive the audio strength from the person talking. 
Uh, so you might be able to create your own virtual Vox where it looks at the audio on the microphone and then transmits at your own level. Okay, good. We do have a wrap-up for read DTMF code. So we can read uh, D DTMF codes. And I was actually using the Grotz logarithm um, for a remote control car, but uh, um, we, we do have this wrapped up, and it's all on chip. So uh, I think the chip does the best job at it anyway. Um, here's our RX power function here where we can uh, um, set the power amplifier output on the, on, the, on the chip itself, and then it gets multiplied by the... Um, by the amplifier. And of course we have the frequency thing and we do um, some basic sanity checking to make sure you're somewhat within within the bands here. Um, you could... Uh, I'd be really careful about tuning out a band because uh, the, the phase lock loop goes all crazy and, and so you probably should stick to these. Um, we also have uh, um, the... FRS channel, so you can actually set an FRS channel by number. You can set GM, GMRS channels by number. You can set the MERS band channels by number. Um, this should probably change the channel width here, but I don't have it working right now, so I should probably think about that. Um, this one does you know, sets the weather channel. They number them like 1 through 7. Now we got a really neat one here, uh, scan the weather channel. So you actually can say, you can nest these, you can say, set the weather channel to the strongest weather channel I can receive. And then you'll hear, you put in that and it'll take a few, pick less than a second, I guess, and then it'll find a weather channel for you. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so those with special licenses, those that have it plugged in a dummy load or into a spectrum analyzer who are doing some new developments, maybe they were making a new product for MERS or GMRS or something like that. There's all kinds of uh, interesting things you could do. Um, you can disable um, the band restrictions with danger mode, but it's very, like, it's, you know, danger mode. Um, also, for people that, I don't know if uh, there's some bands for Mars and whatnot that are slightly off the edges, you'd have to use this. And then some international locations have bands that are slightly offset from Mars, and so you would have to use the, the quote, danger mode uh, to disable the restrictions. Um, and then there's also safe mode as well to return you back. And, uh, you know, what this does is that if you use the transmit function and you're out of band on accident, maybe you were just, like, receiving a signal, it just prevents you from transmitting and, and, and prevents an accidental uh, transmission that wasn't, you know, authorized by law. So a very important um, function that we have in here. We also have a scanner mode. Uh, this will actually just scan through... Um, a series of frequencies and the step you set, the speed, um, and the signal threshold. Now the chip is not a scanner. It's not the fastest at tuning, um, and so, and a lot of radios are like that that aren't dedicated to scanners, so this isn't going to beat your, uh, oh, I don't know, those really high-end scanners, uh, but, but it will help you, uh, you know, look for signals, so that's cool. Um, we also have an inverse of it, find white space. The idea here is that if you had a group of channels that were devoted for bursty traffic um, and you had a whole bunch of these things going and maybe the APRS channel was too busy or maybe the, the idea was is that we have like three APRS channels all going at once um, with some sort of aggregation on another end, um, you know, this could be, uh, you know, white space finder. So there's all kinds of neat stuff you could do. Um, we got another one called uh, scan channels. So you can actually set up a, a, a table of uh, frequencies to scan, and then it'll scan against that. So it's not individually going, you know, by step. Um, and then we also have a white space channels thing. So you can actually specify white space channels between maybe even 2 meter and 440. Hey, find me an open channel. I need to send some data. So there's all kinds of neat applications there. And here's our button mode. Um, right now, I think we just have a reset and push to talk working, but you can actually repurpose this command and and have it, you know, send a, a you know an APRS packet or um, you know we could turn it into a Morse code key and do a lot of fun things with that. And these are just sort of the uh, the uh, interrupt routines to handle that. Um, we also have a radio etiquette section here, uh, a wait for channel. This just waits for an open channel so we don't step over anybody. And then we wait for breakers too because 
right when someone's done transmitting, somebody else could just jump on the air with an emergency. So we don't want to step on them too. So this function actually wraps up all that uh, etiquette all into one. So before you use a transmit, you could wrap it in this, and then it's always good to go. Uh, here's our Morse out function, so we can send Morse code. Um, and uh, this is my attempt before uh, Stephen wrote SSTV here. I'm going to probably pull this out, but it's kind of an idea of you know how you can use the uh, you know the tones library to generate tones and whatnot. But um, we'll be using his instead. Um, let's see. And then this was my attempt to try to do FSK out, and it didn't work too well. We'll be using uh, Stevens uh, APRS uh, FSK code uh, for that, and and uh, I'll walk through that. I don't understand the code fully, but uh, I'll do a little um, preview of that code base as well, so you can take a look at it. Again, this is all open source. It's been on GitHub actually for the last several months. Um, but uh, we'll be converging branches actually here. Uh, everybody says by Monday. So we'll have one library instead of 10 different ones everybody's working on uh, that everybody can check out and start using and writing code against. And we'll try to get some examples to where you can actually, uh, um, you know, wire up something on a breadboard and get the audio working at least so you can kind of hear it working and maybe even get some sketches going uh, ahead of time before your hand shield comes. So uh, I know that was really long, but uh, that is an overview of our library.